This episode was so good. It honestly was. Because so far this season of Batwoman, Batwoman Season 2, you know, I've been liking it, but I haven't really been the biggest fan of it. Like, there's been parts of it where I've been super bored and been like, eh, this again, alright, okay then. But this episode, this episode was great. And I think the reason for that is because... It didn't have anything to do with really the main storyline going on here. Like, you did have stuff with Black Mask and all that. But really, the main storyline here was with Clue Master and all this stuff. And this was something I really love seeing because it, it reminds me of something like Batman the Animated Series or something classic like that where you do just have an episode with a villain and everything is solved in that one episode and it's just one cool episode that spotlights that villain and then you got our heroes going up against them and uh, that's something I really want to see especially with someone like Batwoman because you know Batwoman borrows a lot of villains from Batman and Batman has one of the greatest rogues galleries so I love seeing things like this where you just take one whole episode to just spotlight a villain that's one of my biggest complaints with a lot of these Arrowverse CW shows now is that they just focus too much on the one main villain of the season and usually that's good because then you can really expand the character and develop that character and their backstory and who they are but at the same time it just gets boring after a while so I, I like stuff like this where you just get an, an I, it is basically a filler episode but I love these types of episodes so I did really enjoy this uh but anyways guys uh if you haven't seen this yet quick spoiler warning for Batwoman season 2 episode 13 because we are breaking this thing down in depth and without further ado let's go ahead and jump into this so we start off the episode with a five-year flashback, and it seems like this is Sophie's a actual first day as a Crow member, and she just took down the Clue Master, and as we find out later on in the episode, she, she wasn't actually the one to solve the puzzle, but she's the one that takes credit for it, so then she gets upgraded to, like, a uh, commander or wh whatever role she plays in the Crows now. And then we flash to present day where the Clue Master does escape and he sends a clue to Sophie. Apparently this girl has been poisoned. So then Ryan, Sophie, and Mary, the dynamic trio, they team up to try and solve this riddle. And this is where they end up finding Stephanie Brown, who's a very important character because not only is she the daughter of Clue Master... But in the comics, she has taken on the mantle of Robin and Batgirl, but she's probably best known as Spoiler. So she's definitely a huge character. I don't know if she's going to play a huge role going forward here and with it, how it ended off here. Who knows if she's actually going to be in the next episode or anything. But from what we did get of her in this episode, I did really enjoy the character and I'm hoping to see more of her here. So that was pretty cool to see her in this episode, but once they actually uh, find her, there's this crazy puzzle here that they need to solve to free Stephanie, and it's like with this animals and you, on these boxes, and you have to put them in order of like what eats what, and then they had to shoot the targets, and it was really cool. That was another thing I really enjoyed about seeing Clue Master in this episode is just all of his clues and riddles, because I love this type of stuff, especially in Batman type of stories, because we've never really seen this in live action before, because yes, we did see the Riddler in Batman Forever, but his riddles in that movie weren't really that hard. They were honestly pretty simple riddles. Some of them were actually classic, well-known riddles. So I love that this type of thing where you get just this crazy villain that is just leaving all of these clues and riddles and then our hero has to solve them. So that's something that gets me really excited for the Batman next year because we know the Riddler is going to be the main villain of that and the movie is a full-on detective movie, mystery, murder mystery. So I'm really excited for that and Clue Master really is basically a knockoff version of the Riddler and they actually kind of make a joke of that later on in the episode. So I really like seeing that character in this episode. But uh, once they do actually solve this puzzle and free Stephanie, this is when they find out that she's actually covered in tattoos of like this crazy code of like letters and numbers. And it's pretty crazy. So they call Luke who comes over to help decode the message. So while he's working on that, Ryan, Sophie and Mary, they go to find Clue Master. And they figured that he'll probably go where he struck last, which was at the Quiz Bowl. But uh, he did not succeed, so now he is going to finish what he originally started. 
And this is when our trio gets stuck in an explosive game of Quiz Bowl because then uh, they're actually on a pressure plate. And if they step off that pressure plate, then the bomb is going to go kaboom and, you know, they're, they'd be dead. So I really love this game of Quiz Bowl because, again, it was very in line with the whole Clue Master Riddler vibe. But also, like, the, the questions here, it was, like, Gotham villains theme. So you had references to a whole bunch of Batman villains, uh, like the Joker, like Poison Ivy, the Penguin, Mr. Freeze, even Captain Cold was in there, Scarecrow, Victor Zaz, also Laszlo Valentine, who in the comics is Professor Pig, but I think it's interesting why they call him Laszlo Valentine, so maybe in the Arrowverse he's not actually Professor Pig yet, and that could be a possibility to see that character undergo that transformation to become the Professor Pig in a future season of Batwoman, so that's something that excites me, but of course the funniest one here was the first one where Clue Master was talking about like a, like a, um, he was saying that this character is like very similar to me, but you know, definitely not as cool and not as smart and all that stuff, and uh, and his riddles are much more lame, and that was of course the Riddler, so I did really enjoy that as well, um, so yeah, that, that was just really cool. But then after this, uh, after the game of Quiz Bowl is over, now they have 45 minutes on the clock to figure out what to do because the pressure plate is going to explode. So Sophie finally reveals that she knows that Ryan is Batwoman. And Ryan's freaking out here. She's like, oh no, oh no. But then they're like, all right, we're on a bomb. We got to just go with it. So she sends Sophie to the Batcave to go get her grappling hook baton thing. And when she does get back, they all are saved. Sophie makes it out, Ryan makes it out, and Mary makes it out. So they're all good there. They're all safe. But meanwhile, Luke and Stephanie are, of course, trying to work on decoding that code. But then all of a sudden, Stephanie just says, Quiz Bowl is a distraction. And then she knocks out Luke and she runs off. That is when she goes to meet up with her father, the Clue Master, who is now wearing this very comics accurate look for the Clue Master. So I thought that was pretty cool to see here as well. And then after this happens, uh, she reveals to her father that she actually betrayed her. She was the one that really solved his riddle all those years ago and was responsible for him being put in jail. So then he's like, all right, if you won't be my partner in crime, then I'll just kill us both. So then he put he locks her in the car and then he starts up this gas that's going to kill them. But luckily, Luke does save show up and he saves the day. He saves Stephanie. And then she even kisses him, so let's go, Luke. Uh, good for him. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be, like, an actual romance that we'll see here again, but, you know, I'm here for it if that is something that happens. So I'm, I'm excited to see where that goes. But then after this, at the end of ep the episode, this is where we get set up for the rest of the season because we see that Mary is now back in her clinic, but all of a sudden, Jacob is rushed into the clinic. He just took some snake bite, and he's got foam coming out of his mouth, and things do not look good. Now, I don't think he's going to die, because they wouldn't have just spoiled that at the end of this episode, but, the, I mean, it, it's not looking too good either, so uh, this is pretty crazy. I mean, this is this is why you don't do drugs, kids, so t take some advice from Jacob, from Jacob Kane. You don't want to look like that. You don't want the foam coming out of your mouth. Don't do drugs. Uh, but then the cliffhanger for this episode dealt with Alice, who we got little sprinkles of throughout the episode, as we saw at the end of last episode. She was captured by Black Mask and Circe slash Kate, and now she's being tortured and all this stuff, and she makes a compromise. She's like, you know what, your daughter Circe, her face is all burned up, so I can make her a face mask, because that, that was a big thing last season, is that she's good with making skin faces so that's what she does she makes a face for Circe and she replicates it just as best as she can but once she puts the face on Circe slash Kate uh we do get the reveal of oh it's Wallace Day because she's the new Kate Kane recast for the series and I guess this does explain how they recast Ruby Rose and why Kate Kane all of a sudden looks different uh because it's now it's a new face uh, but then once Alice puts on the face, she looks at her eyes and says, those are the eyes of our father. And then she realizes that this is Kate. And I have no idea what's going to happen from here because that is where the episode ends. 
But that was pretty crazy, though. Uh, I mean, we, again, we already knew that this was Kate, but now other people are starting to figure that out. And I'm just interested to see where this goes. Again, this was a great episode. I did really, really enjoy it. But, guys, let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. What did you think about this episode of Batwoman? Let me know your thoughts and theories for next week's episode. And, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this video. And hit the subscribe button so I can keep up to date on everything goes on.